Hey guys, Kevin here with eTrailer and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a Solera RV slide out awning on our 2022 Jayco J Feathered Travel Trailer. So the Solera RV awning is going to do a good job at protecting your slide out. It's going to cover the roof of your slide out so that no rain, no leaves, any other debris fall on the top of your slide out and then get stuck in here when you're closing it up. It's also going to help with water getting down into your uh, wiper seals so that you don't have to worry about any leaks inside of your RV. Because these awnings block the roof of your slide out, it's going to save you a whole lot of money and time further down the road. It's going to do a great job at protecting your roof so that you don't have any mold, mildew, any kind of water damage leaking through and ruining the interior or the exterior of your roof, which is also going to save you from having to replace your roof because it's not quite as easy of a task. And then it also is going to save you a whole lot of time because if you're like me, when I go camping, if I pop out my slide out, I have to get up on the roof or use a ladder to the side just so I can sweep off any of those leaves or any other kind of debris that ends up on there so that it doesn't end up on the inside of my camper when I close it. So there's a couple things to consider when you're going to purchase a slide out awning. First, the most important one being the length of it. So to do that, you're actually going to measure from the outside to the outside edge of the flange. And that's going to give you, and you're going to go by inches. Uh, we have a facet on our website, which will show you the correct awning for that inch. Um, but there's also another issue if you have any clearance. So right now we don't have any issues with our camper, but there are other campers where you're going to have maybe an awning, maybe there's a door in the way or a window or something like that where you're going to have to back off a little bit and get a smaller size because this arm right here is going to stick out five to seven inches. So you're going to need to make sure that you have clearance of that because you don't want that coming into contact with anything when you close up your awning. All right, I'm going to show you how to measure this right now. You may need another person to hold the end of your tape measure. I just used a little bit of tape to hold it onto the flange. So you'd come up to here and it looks like we've got right at 141 inches. So from here we would take this to our facet and then find the correct slide topper that would match that. So the installation of our awning really isn't that hard. Uh, it is just a little awkward just because of the size of it. Obviously, if you had a smaller awning, it'd be easier to do by yourself. Once you get into your 12 foot to maybe even 18 foot, you're gonna need maybe one or two other people just to kind of help you get it in place because these are just a little bit too awkward to handle all on your own. This uh, install was actually a lot easier because it came equipped with the access plates already installed and our extrusion bracket right up at the top there already installed as well. So this install didn't really take that long. Let me show you how I did it. So right out of the box, you're gonna have your topper awning, you're gonna have an extrusion rail, your extension rods, your access plates, your access brackets, end caps for your extension rail, and then an assortment of screws and uh, bolts. The tools that you're gonna need today are a Phillips head screwdriver, an Allen wrench, and then some pliers. So luckily on our J-Feather today, the factory already installed our access plates. Um, if you were going to do this yourself, say yours did not come with this already installed, what you would need to do is first place some butyl tape over your screw holes in the access plate, which you can also get on our site. And then you're going to want to put your access plate as far up as you can and as far over towards the edge of both sides of the T-molding here. In our case, that's exactly how it is. When you put this on, you are going to want to have your tapered edge down and this lip right here facing up. When installing your access plate, you're going to want to use the flathead screws. Those flathead screws are going to sit down inside of the bracket here so that you don't have any issues sliding on your access bracket. The next step would be to install your extrusion rail. There's going to be a measurement that you're going to find in your instructions uh, that you're going to want from the top of the T-molding up, and that's where the C-channel is going to sit. You're going to want to do that just so that you make sure when you have your awning on there that the fabric's not going to sit here and rub against your T-molding because that'll end up wearing it out before the life of the awning. 
So one little tip I have is to take some needle nose pliers and just kind of peel the C channel back a little bit on each side. That way you can easily slide your awning in and so that the edge doesn't end up scratching your fabric as you're pulling it through here. Because this is sheet metal that just cut off on the end so it can be kind of sharp. So your extension rod is going to have a hole in it for our screw and then there's also going to be a hole in the bottom of the arm here. So we're going to line these up. We're going to take our end cap which is also going to have a hole and line it up with our hole down here. Pop that into place and then we'll start screwing in our screw here. I said a screwdriver before but you can also just use a drill. Then almost all the way and then you can take a paint marker uh, we're gonna take a black paint marker today and just get the head of that in so that it matches up with the rest of our equipment here and now we can screw this in the rest of the way all right so now we're gonna take these paper rolls off each side and then we're gonna unloop our fabric just once just to take some of the tension off so that we can have some room to work while we stick this up into the extrusion rail so now we're going to start feeding our fabric in through our extrusion rail. As you can see, they've got a little plastic rod here that'll make it a little bit easier to slide it through. This is where you're going to need a couple of hands to help you. Now we can take our access bracket and we're going to slide this on so that our arms are facing up and away because it does have a particular shape to match up here and at the same time we'll start sliding in our bracket on here. So like I said before you're going to want to make sure that your arms are actually facing up and away. You don't want your awning roller to be smacking against your flange or your extrusion rail every time that it closes up. So the next step is going to be centering your slide topper on your slide out. So what I'm going to do is just use our flange edge here as a reference point. And we've got about two and a quarter on this side. I'll verify what we have on the other side and adjust accordingly so that both are equal. The only instance where you wouldn't want them to be equal is if you had a uh, like a window or door, maybe you got a, another awning on the side of your camper there, depending on the slide out and just basically how much clearance space you have. If you don't have the clearance, you can make these just a little bit off towards one side. We do have that pretty commonly uh, on the question side. So our next step is going to be installing our set screws to keep our access bracket from sliding or moving off of our access plate. You're going to have four set screws that are going to require an Allen wrench. And then the next thing you're going to want to make sure is whether or not you use the top or the bottom. Uh, just looking at it, you can see that we use the top based on where the brackets are slid into here. So I'm going to need to use these set screws in the top. We're just going to tighten these into place. As you can see, these set screws also come with some Loctite, which is gonna kind of squeeze out as you're installing it, and that'll help keep these screws from ever loosening up. So next in your kit, there is four hex head self-tapping screws that we're going to use to keep our extension bar from moving at all in our bracket. So we pushed up on this so that our line here actually matched up with the inside of the bracket as we were screwing it in. So same thing over here, we're just going to take our black paint marker, match this up. All right, so next we can take apart our pin here so that we can unroll our awning. There's gonna be a whole lot more tension because I already took the one off of the other side. So we're going to have to really pull this up and take some pliers. 
as you can see, it's loose now. Get some pliers, pop that off. We don't want to lose this. Later on, you may need this if you're replacing the awning. Maybe you want a different color, something like that. Then we're going to slowly let this go back into place. And it'll tension itself right up. All right, so now that we've run our slide out in and out a couple of times to see if we have this exactly where we need it to be, um, you're going to want to do this just so that you can see if this portion of your awning needs to be moved a little bit in the extrusion rail. You don't want any big wrinkles or anything like that. And then you're also going to want to check that this part of your flange is not touching your fabric because if it rubs against that every time, it's going to sit there and just cut right through it. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to take two, we got two little uh, hex head self-tapping screws that we're going to stick in our extrusion rail. Once we have our end piece where we want it so that there's no wrinkles and we're going to drill right through that so that it won't move at all once we have our slide out in and out. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this screw and you're going to drive it right down through that C-channel into your bead here. You're going to want to do this about an inch back from the edge. And just go kind of slow. You don't want to end up popping off and going into your awning fabric. So this screw right here is gonna hold our bead in place so that when we move our slide out in and out, this isn't gonna move at all. So now we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So as you can see, we've got a few wrinkles here in the awning fabric. So what we're gonna do is pull that screw out on the right side and we're gonna press it in just a little bit more and then we'll put our screw back in place and then we'll try pulling our, on our slide out in and out a few more times just to make sure that we don't have any other wrinkles. So like I said, we're back up here now with our slide out push back out. I'm gonna take this screw back out and we're gonna try and push our bead back down just a little bit. that back in place and put my screw back through. And now we can go and close our slide out in and out a few times and see if that fixed our issue. So as you can see, that did not fix our wrinkle issue. So I am gonna have to try on the other side and just pull it down a little bit more. Um, you may end up seeing this regardless just because when you get to your longer length slide out toppers, it'll start to bow in the middle and you just won't really be able to get rid of that few wrinkles that you might see. This is going to take a little bit of playing back and forth on each side. So don't be frustrated if you end up seeing wrinkles or if you can't get them all the way out because you're only going to see this once the slide out is actually in. You won't see it once it's out. So my overall thoughts of our Solera RV awning here is that it's a great product. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. There's nothing you have to do once it's installed. It will go in and out as your slide out moves. So it's not like you have to hook up any wiring or anything like you would for a standard awning. Uh, it's really gonna save you a lot of time. If you're like me, uh, when I close up my camper slide out uh, early in the morning, there's usually a lot of dew up on the roof or up on my slide out and it makes it a real hassle to try and clean it off and kind of uh, scares you a little bit when you're 20 feet up in the air having to walk on a wet roof. So overall it's going to save you a whole lot of time and it's also going to save you money because you won't have to replace the roof of your slide out. I think that about does it for our installation of the Solera RV awning on our 2022 Jayco Jay Feather Travel Trailer. My name's Kevin. Thanks for watching guys.